Hello everybody and welcome to this week's update video. Uh, my name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer and I try and develop features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Um, and it's thanks to people like yourself that I'm able to continue this work and spend time fixing the kinds of things that you think are important. So a big thank you to all of the people who sponsor me on Patreon and Liberepe. If you'd like to jo join them and you'd like to help me uh, make Inkscape great, uh, please consider it. Um, okay, so I haven't actually given you a proper update in the last few weeks, and um, I think it's time that we caught up on a few things. So let's dive straight into uh, the Bug Accelerator pro program. Uh, this is a program where uh, the Inkscape project itself funds uh, multiple developers to focus entirely on fixing problems for the next release. Um, I think this is a, a really important program to make sure that releases uh, just have the extra, um, not just polish, but stability, because we do fo focus on things like crashes. Um, the way the program works is, is that you guys report bugs. The bug triage team, which is um, you guys again, prioritize them and uh, basically set a milestone that says this really should be looked at for 1.4, which is the next version of Inkscape that's going to be released. And, uh, and then people like myself get contracted uh, by the Inkscape project to spend our time uh, trying to fix those issues. So um, I just wanted to talk about some of the issues that I've managed to fix uh, during my pro program for the past two weeks and also the um, issues that have been fixed by uh, Vibehav and Tav. These are the two other programmers that have been con contracted in this cycle. Um, okay, so the first big uh, thing that I managed to fix is the um, there's a bunch of uh, shortcut keys in Inkscape's tools which are not customizable. They're basically baked into the Inkscape code base. And for the longest time, it's been frustrating uh, to figure out how we can make them customizable, um, just simply because of the way that they were programmed. Um, I'd managed to figure out a way to uh, allow a lot of these tool shortcuts to be cus cus customizable. It involves uh, refactoring a small amount of the code, but I'm very, very happy with it because it's both compatible with the 1.4 release and also with the GTK4 version, which we'll get into uh, in a little bit later. The upshot is, is that um, there's a bunch of extra tools that you can actually customize the keys for, and going forwards, as people report more keys that they'd like to be customizable, we'll basically factor those in. I didn't want to do them all at once. It makes the uh, the, the process harder to, to get them merged quick, quickly for the Bug Accelerator pro program, but if they're important to you, uh, consider reporting them. Okay. Um, the, the other big fix is fixing the way PDF export works. This started off as an issue to do with um, hyperlinks. This is basically, you, you can add hyperlinks to an SVG file, and then uh, when you export it to PDF, they turn into links, and you can link between pages, you can link between objects or paragraphs and items, uh, or you can link to external websites. Um, what was happening was that the, the um, internal links weren't always correct. Like they seemingly would always go to the second page or the first page, or they would never go to like the right page. And this is because when we do a PDF export, we were basically printing the same objects again and again and again, right? So if you had a rectangle and three pages, that rectangle appears in one page, but we print it in all three. Uh, it's just off the side of the pages for the other two. Uh, this is not great, and if you uh, have a look at the way Inkscape exports PDFs, you'll you'll find that uh, complicated multi-page documents end up to be significantly larger because they're duplicating a lot of data. Um, I fixed that. Uh, we should have much better tests for deciding whether an object is uh, visible on a page or not, and whether it should be included or not, um, as well as some fixes for gen generally like backlink link linking and stuff. And I also found some problematic behaviors with PDF export in general. I tried to fix those as best I could. Um, now, uh, there's a whole bunch of fixes for the batch exporter and the single exporter di dialogues. Um, so we had bad file name issues, directories going missing, uh, some crashes even. I uh, managed to fix all of those. Um, I managed to fix a regression that happened in 1.4 that basically stopped you from being in, being able to enter groups. Uh, if you have a group, you can double click on it and basically enter it as if it was a layer and then start editing stuff. Uh, that was uh, broken, so that's been fixed. 
Um, I added a test for the uh, image formats. Um, basically, uh, Inkscape supports a bunch of uh, raster-based extensions. And what was happening was is that we weren't guaranteeing that those all of those formats like JPEG and WebP, etc., would be available on every platform. These new tests should help packages uh, guarantee that they are supporting everything that Inkscape expects them to support. Um, we, I've, I've fixed a bug that basically stopped people from being able to execute extensions from, from the command line or from the Inkscape shell. Um, I don't know if anybody knows about the Inkscape shell, but it's a feature, I think, that allows you to type in commands. I do not consider it to be stable, but it's fixed. Uh, crashes are bad, no matter when. Um, I fixed a crash when you were exporting a sing single page PDF file in very specific circumstances uh, where the position was slight slightly off. Uh, let's talk about the bugs uh, in the pro program that Vibehab has fixed. Um, he's been fixing the um, change of transparency bug that happens when you use the shape builder on semi-transparent objects. Um, he fixed a, a missing uh, image in, um, where was that now? It's a broken image. Uh, I forget, I haven't put it in my notes. Sorry, Vibe have. Uh, he fixed a cloned object stroke width issue in the fill and stroke di di dialogue. Um, Tav fixed an issue in the text um, uh, glyph to path. No, not glyph to path, split glyphs that basically created an infinite loop when you used Arabic text. Um, so that's been fixed. Uh, let's talk about some other issues that were not a part of the pro program. Um, I paid attention to some of the Inkscape manual problems. Ba basically, um, Inkscape has a link to a manual from the help page, like if you go to help uh, Inkscape manual. But this manual isn't actually hosted or run by Inkscape the project. It's uh, run by Tav uh, on his personal uh, website. And this caused issues when his ISP, ISP? Uh, the people providing the website, um, considered his page to be problematic and took it down and he had to go through an entire process of trying to get it back up again. Um, this is bad because we had no control over how or what the, the, the manual should look like. So that menu item essentially became broken for that entire time. Um, we've got some new redirects on the Inkscape website itself. So if you go to forward slash manual, it now redirects to tabs man manual. And in the future, we'll have greater control to be able to redirect that to any word that we want when we have a better manual to put in place. Um, I, I also cleaned up some critical war warnings and s some other stuff. There's been a bunch of uh, cleanup to basically make the 1.4 uh, happen properly. Okay, so let's get to the uh, buried lead, which is basically the, the GTK4 stuff landed and uh, the bit, there's been a split, right? So 1.4 is still the old code and then there's the new main branch, which is not now GTK4. And what happened was, is I rebranched all the color work that I've been doing, you know, the, the CMYK, all of this new stuff that I've been doing. Uh, but unfortunately, because the GTK4 stuff is so bleeding edge because it's so new uh, not only is there a whole bunch of broken stuff in master now that like hurts the ability for you to use it um but i couldn't compile it i literally i literally couldn't compile inkscape anymore um from none of my computers would be able to compile it because they were too old uh, not just too old because they didn't have the libraries but too old to even build the libraries from source that then would be used to build inkscape like we were several orders of magnitude away from being uh, new enough to use it and unfortunately there wasn't a lot of um sort of scaffolding to be able to to support older distributions and i say older i mean the long term support release of pop os or linux mint or like any of these distributions were all too old now um and this is kind of a problem like for for development i can imagine this impacting severely like any linux developer who wants to develop on the mainline branch now is going to have to have a pretty up-to-date operating system um, i'm hoping that won't affect us when we go to actually uh release it uh, you know this will be 1.5 when we finally get to release it um but still like it will need a pretty up-to-date gtk version and it will need a whole bunch of other libraries to be very, very new. Um, this won't be. This will be less of a problem going for, for, forwards, but it's definitely put the brakes on my ability to do the color stuff, since you know having a working computer that can compile the thing that you're developing is 
fundamental to you being able to do the work. Um, so I've been installing a bunch of new operating systems on my computer to basically to find something that will compile it. Um, I've had to install the alpha version of 2404 uh, and remove all the snap stuff and, uh, and get it you know, the way that I like it. And I finally managed to get a, a, a compile. I managed to m integrate everything. It's been a lot of work, but literally the color uh, functionality really hasn't moved. Um, I've done some signaling stuff and I've, I've, I've in, looked at some other things, but like not a lot. And most of it's because of, it's been delayed by this uh, GTK4 branch work that has... Yeah, it's put a put a spanner in the works. I've, I've got to admit, I, I don't know whether to admit that I'm not happy about it. Um, but like, we just got to deal with the with the way that the Inkscape project has decided to land this functionality and try to move it forward as best as we can. It'll it'll smooth out. I'm I'm almost certain that over time, given enough energy, it'll it'll smooth out. Um, so let's talk about some of the other stuff that's been going on in the Inkscape pro project. Uh, the About Screen contest concludes tomorrow. There's been about 25 entries according to the recording of this video, and I'll probably make a video about the, the entries and which ones I like. Um, the new hardware pro program for Inkscape uh, has come into effect. There's a bunch of people. There's a, a designer and two programmers are going to get new computers paid for by the Inkscape project, are basically paid for by donations to the Inkscape project. Um, this will help basically improve co compatibility and test things like Mac OS, test things like tab tablet support, that sort of thing, um, which is great, great news. I love it when the project spends money on basically making sure that people have the tools necessary to do the job. Um, MyCov has merged an entire improvement to the font selection um, in, in Inkscape. This will go into 1.4 and it looks pretty cool. Uh, you know, it's a step in the right dire direction for text and font support in Inkscape. Um, I'm looking forward to everybody being able to try it out. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's been basically trying to fix all of the holes in the GTK4 branches, um, you know, and trying to progress it forward from forwards, as I was mentioning. Um, but more things than I can mention, really, to, to give everybody, because there's a lot of different individuals trying to chip away at the problems. Um, yeah, and that's probably about it for this week. Uh, let me know in the comments how you're feeling. Um, I think there's probably going to be an alpha release in the next few months. But as you can probably tell, like usually we would release an alpha in January and it's now April. This means that this release for 1.4 is definitely behind schedule. Uh, probably by about four months, maybe long longer. Uh, I am sorry, there's just a lot of stuff going on, a lot of refactoring actually, uh, which has meant that um, there's a lot to digest and we just got to get our, our act together, I think, and, and get a release out. Um, but we don't want to do it improperly, so we still need to actually fix problems. Uh, otherwise, 1.4 is really going to suck. Okay, so I will see you probably next week, but we'll see how that goes. And uh, thank you all for watching. Thank <laughs> you.